<laughs> so the thing is, we don't have any uh, cold water on the station actually. It's either options are either hot or warm. So what I do is I fill up a couple of, uh, if you want a cold drink, I fill up a couple of drink bags and I put them back here in the Petter Cot, a section of the ship up against the hull where it gets a little bit cool and then over the course of a few hours they get at least chilled a little bit. We, had, we don't have a refrigerator either. No refrigerator, no freezer, and no Kroger, Rocky Road ice cream, unfortunately. But anyway, not that, any, not that anybody around here is uh, especially missing that. <laughs> so anyway, I'll put this away. Okay, we're going to back to the U.S. segment for the DPC, so say goodbye for now to Sir Oh, bye. <laughs> See you later. Okay, yeah. here we go. Oh. Flying around is kind of hard to do with one hand, but you get used to it because you have to carry stuff. And that's pretty much my daily commute <laughs> back to work. Okay. Well, we still have a few minutes before I have to start the prepack, so I figured I have a chance to brush my teeth and uh, maybe do a little shaving. So let's go over into Node 2, and I'll show you how that gets done. Okay. So here's where I do my hygiene type stuff. First, I take my vitamin. Next, teeth brushing. And it works pretty much the same way as it does down on Earth. The end is a little bit different, though. As you can tell, any liquid, whoa! Ah. If it's floating free, it turns into a sphere due to the surface tension. So it's just a ball. And it's kind of fun to play around with. Yes, that's right. You just swallow the toothpaste. You could spit it into a napkin, but then you got a bunch of napkins around with toothpaste in it. It's kind of messy and it's inconvenient. Rather to just enjoy what Clay Anderson used to call the after dinner mint. And just, because unfortunately there's no sink around here that I can just spit the toothpaste out into. So that's how it's done. Uh oh. That means it's time to take a picture of that lake in Egypt. So let me clean my toothbrush, and then we'll take off and do that. So I turn it on, make sure it's in autofocus, check all the settings. Looks good. I'm ready. I'm all ready to take pictures. Okay, here it comes. 
I can see the northern coast of Egypt. And this should give you an idea of how fast we fly. We go 17,500 miles an hour, which is a big number. Uh, what it means is we go around the world every hour and a half. And uh, it also means I can get from, sh from coast to coast in the U.S., L.A. to New York, in about 10 minutes, or about two minutes from Chicago to New York. It's pretty nice. I can see the huge expanse of the Sahara Desert. It's actually very easy to pick out. Parts of mist. Now you can see the Nile River coming up out the left side. The Nile River is impossible to miss. It's uh, in the middle of an of, uh, expanse of tan, beige-colored sand. It's this bluish-green, fertile valley that uh, just incredibly discreet change and incredibly pronounced. And here we go. I got some good shots. Hopefully the scientists down there will be happy with those. Okay, I'll take the card out of here and download those photos later. Now it's time for us to get back to work. Now my next job is to take uh, flow measurements of the ventilation. So we have ventilation fans uh, throughout all the different modules, and the air circulates throughout the whole space station. Actually, it goes from the Russian segment all the way through the American segment and then back to the Russian segment, where we have our primary means of scrubbing out the carbon dioxide and where we also have uh, the generation of uh, oxygen. We have the cap capability now to do both those things here in the U.S. segment, too, but uh, the, the, it's kind of just uh, for backup or for additional capability right now. So uh, what we're doing today is I'll be using this device called the VelociCalc. And uh, basically it's a hot wire anemometer, which means by uh, the, the, the faster the airflow goes over this wire, the more the heat transfer, and then there's a change in the current that goes through the wire, and that's read by this device. So basically it just tells us the wind speed in any given spot. So I hold this up to the vent and uh, measure the the amount of wind coming out, the speed of the air coming out of the vent. And uh, I'll read those numbers down to Houston. So that's my job, and uh, I'll let you watch along for a little bit until it gets excruciatingly boring for you.